This video is going to cover module 5, homework 3 notes. This time we're going to factor general trinomials. So last time, module 5, homework 2, it was monic trinomials where a value is going to be 1. This time we have um, trinomials in general. Remember, trinomials mean three terms. So factor the trinomial uh, 2x squared plus 11x plus 5. Our first step in factoring is GCF. There's nothing that 2x squared, 11x, and 5 have in common, so there's no GCF. So this is in standard form for us. We know our standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. So this will tell me that our a value is going to be 2, b is 11, and c is 5. So we are doing these exactly the same way that we did with our module 5 homework 2. The only thing is this shortcut does not work. So we have to factor by grouping every time. So we want to factor by grouping. So that means I want to split up this 11x. So we are going to use our little template to figure out how we can split up that 11x. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us a times c. So 2 times 5, which is 10 and the same two numbers to add together to give me b, which is 11. So I'm thinking 10 times 1 is 10, and 10 plus 1 is 11. So we are going to use this 10 and this 1 to split up our 11x. So it's going to be 2x squared. Instead of 11x, we're going to have plus 10x. So that's a number in our blank, plus 1x. Remember, 10x plus 1x still will give us our 11x, plus 5. Now we have four terms we can now factor by grouping. So group the first two terms together, group the last two terms together. Looking at our first two terms, 2x squared plus 10x, GCF, they both have a 2x in common. So factoring out that 2x, 2x squared divided by 2x will leave us with 1x, 10x divided by 2x will leave us with a positive 5. So, looking at our next two terms, I have x plus 5. I want x plus 5 to be left over. I have to take out something, some GCF. So they both have a 1 in common. So let's take out that positive 1. Taking out a positive 1, we are still left with positive x plus 5. So we know we did this right because they both have this x plus 5 in common. So that'll be one factor. That'll be our GCF. Taking out that x plus 5, we are left over with 2x plus 1. That will be our other factor. So x plus 5 is one factor. 2x plus 1 is another factor. Multiply those two factors together, and we'll get back to our original problem. So let me make this one comment. If we were to switch these around, so 1 times 10 and 1 plus 10, that means switching these two around. Our work might look a little different, but we'll get the same answers, the same factors in the same. It doesn't matter what order you write those factors in because we are multiplying. We can multiply in any order. So going on to our next example. Factor 3x squared minus 10x plus 7. Exactly the same um, concept, just different numbers now. So looking at 3x squared minus 10x plus 7, there's no GCF, nothing in common. Our a value is 3, b is negative 10, and c is positive 7. So we are looking for two numbers that will multiply together to give us a times c, so 3 times 7, which is 21. And the same two numbers to be added together to give us our b term, which is negative 10. So I'm thinking negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21. And negative 7 plus negative 3 will give us that negative 10 we're looking for. So we are going to use these two numbers in our blank to split up this negative 10x. So 3x squared is saying the same. Instead of negative 10x, we're going to use the numbers in our blanks. So negative 7x minus 3x plus 7. Doesn't matter what order you write this negative 7 or the negative 3 in. But now we have four terms we can factor by grouping. So grouping the first two, grouping the last two, looking at our first two terms, 3x squared minus 7x, they both have an x in common. So we're going to take out that GCF of x, and we are left over with 3x squared divided by x will give us 3x. Negative 7x divided by x will leave us with a negative 7. Looking at our next two terms, we want positive 3x minus 7 to be left over. We have negative 3x plus 7. So we know we need to take out a GCF of negative 1. 
Taking out that negative 1, we are left over with positive 3x minus 7. We know we did something right because they are both 3x minus 7, so that will be one factor. Taking out that 3x minus 7, we are left over with x minus 1, which is our other factor. So 3x minus 7 is one factor, x minus 1 is another factor. That's our final answer. Multiply those two factors back together and you'll get to our original problem. Another example, factor the following trinomial. So again, same thing over and over, just different numbers. So looking at 15x squared minus 14x plus 2. As of right now, there's nothing that all three terms have in common, so no GCF. Our a value is 15, b is negative 14, and our c value is 2. So we're looking for two numbers that will multiply together to give us a times c, so 15 times 2, which is 30, and the same two numbers to be added together to give us this negative 14, which is b. So looking at this, my options for 30, two numbers that will multiply together to give us 30, 1 times 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 4 doesn't work, uh, 5 and 6, 6 is already there, so I know that my, answer, my list is done. So none of these two numbers would ever add or subtract to give us 14, so that telling, that's telling me that nothing satisfies, nothing fits both conditions. So it cannot be factored. Notice we didn't take out anything. There wasn't a GCF. There is nothing that we could do. So it's not factorable. So just like going back to the radical stuff, whenever something cannot be broken down any further, it is a prime number. So this will be a prime trinomial. So it's not factorable, it's prime. There's nothing that we can do to it to factor it. So moving on. So next example. Factor the following trinomial, 7y to the fourth plus 18y cubed minus 9y squared. So looking at all three terms, our first step is GCF. I notice they all have a y squared in common. So let's go ahead and factor out that GCF of y squared. And we are left over with 7. If I have 4 y's, I'm taking away 2 y's, so 2 y's are left over. Plus 18, I have 3 y's, I'm taking away 2 y's, so 1 y's left over. Minus 9, I have y squared divided by y squared, they cancel each other out, so just negative 9. So now y squared is already one factor, we just have to worry about factoring whatever's left over. So the 7 y squared plus 18 y minus 9. So I'll tell my a value is 1, b is 18, c is negative 9. We are looking for two numbers that will multiply together. I'm sorry, a is 7. Two numbers that will multiply together to give us 7 times negative 9, a times c, which is negative 63. And the same two numbers to add together to give me 18, which is our b value. So I'm thinking 21 times 3. Um, and 21 plus 3. So in order to multiply together to give me negative 63, I know one of these has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. In order to add together to give me a positive 18, the larger number has to be positive. So 21 should be positive, 3 should be negative. So 21 times negative 3 is negative 63. 21 plus negative 3 is positive 18. So using these numbers to split up our middle 18y. So let's come up here. So that y squared is so just out front, leave it out front. We have 7y squared. Instead of this 18x, we're going to use the numbers in our blanks. So plus, 21, uh, plus 21y minus 3y minus 9. We now have four terms. We can now factor by grouping. So group the first two, group the last two. Just bringing down this y squared. It's already done for us. We're just leaving it out front. 
looking at our first two terms, 7y squared plus 21y. They both have a 7y in common, so I can factor that out from both terms. Dividing out a 7y, we're left over with y plus 3. Looking at our last two terms, negative 3y minus 9. We're going to divide out a GCF of negative 3 from both of those. And we are left over with y plus 3. We know we did something right because we are left over with y plus 3 for both. So we have that y squared. Keep on bringing down that GCF. They both have a y plus 3 in common, so that will be another factor. Taking out that y plus 3, we're left with 7y minus 3. So y squared is a factor, 7y, I'm sorry, y squared is a factor, y plus 3 is a factor, 7y minus 3 is another factor. Multiply these three factors back together and we get back to the original problem. Next example, factor the following trinomial. We have 27x squared plus 27xy plus 6y squared. So looking at our GCF, I notice they all have a 3 in common. So our GCF should be 3. So we're going to factor or divide out a 3 from all terms. We're left over with 9x squared plus 9xy plus 2y squared. So that 3 is already factored for us. It's just hanging out out front. So now we have to worry about factoring this inside, this 9x squared plus 9xy plus 2y squared. So our a value is 9, b is 9, and c is 2. We are looking for two numbers that will multiply together to give us a times c, which is 9 times 2, so 18. And the same two numbers to add together to give us 9, which is b. So I'm thinking... 6 times 3 is 18, 6 plus 3 is 9. So we're going to use the numbers in our blanks to split up that middle 9xy term. So coming up here. So that 3 is just hanging out out front. It's already done. We have 9x squared. Instead of our 9xy, we're going to split it up by saying 6xy plus 3xy plus 2y squared. So now we have four terms. I can group the first two, and I can group the last two. This three is just hanging out out front. Looking at our first two terms, 9x squared plus 6xy, I notice they both have a 3x in common. So we could factor out that 3x. And we are left over with 3x plus 2y. Looking at our last two terms, we have 3xy plus 2y squared. I notice they both have a y in common. So taking out that y, we are left over with 3x plus 2y. We know we did something right because they both have 3x plus 2y in common. So bringing down this GCF of 3, they both have 3x plus 2y in common. So that's another factor. Taking out all those factors, we're left over with 3x plus 1y as our last factor. So our final answer is 3 times 3x plus 2y times 3x plus 1y. Moving on, next example. Back to the following trinomial. 8x to the fourth plus 20x cubed plus 12x squared. So I notice our first step in factoring is GCF. They all have 4x squared in common. So dividing out a 4x squared from all terms, we're left over with 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. So our a value will be 2, our b value will be 5, and our c value will be 3. We're looking for two numbers that will multiply together to give us a times c. So 2 times 3 is 6. And the same two numbers to add together to give us b, which is 5. Mm, 2 and 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 plus 3 will give us 5. So coming back up here, 
this 4x squared just hanging out out front. We have 2x squared. Instead of this 5x, we're going to split it up using the numbers in our blanks. So plus 2x, plus 3x, plus 3. We now have four terms we can factor by grouping. So grouping the first two, grouping the last two. 4x squared is still just hanging out out front. Looking at our first two terms, 2x squared plus 2x. They both have a 2x in common. So taking that out. And we're left over with x plus 1. Looking at our last two terms, 3x plus 3. They both have a 3 in common, so taking out that GCF of 3, we're left over with x plus 1. So we know we did something right because they both have x plus 1 in common. So still bringing down this GCF of 4x squared. They both have x plus 1 in common. So that'll be a GCF. Taking out that 4x squared and x plus 1, we're left over with 2x plus 3 as our last factor. So 4x squared is a factor, x plus 1 is a factor, 2x plus 3 is a factor. That's going to be our final answer. Multiply all those three factors back together to get back to our original problem. So, last two examples for this note section. Factor the following trinomial, 25x squared minus 15xy plus 2y squared. So looking at this, there's no GCF. There's nothing that all three terms have in common. So our A value is going to be 25. B value is going to be negative 15. And our C value is going to be 2. We are looking for two numbers that will multiply together to give us A times C. So 25 times 2 is 50. And the same two numbers to add together to give us negative 15, which is B. So I'm thinking negative 5 times negative 10 is positive 50. Negative 5 plus negative 10 will give us that negative 15. And that's how we're going to split up this negative 15xy. So 25x squared is going to stay the same. Instead of negative 15xy, we're going to split it up using the numbers in our blanks. So negative 5xy minus 10xy plus 2y squared. We now have four terms, so we can now factor by grouping. So let's group the first two together, group the last two together. Looking at our first two terms, 25x squared minus 5xy. They both have a 5x in common, so let's factor out that GCF. Factoring out 5x, we are left over with 5x minus y. Looking at our last two terms, we have negative 10xy plus 2y squared. So they both have a negative 2y in common. So factoring out that negative 2y, we're left over with positive 5x minus y. So we know we did something right because they both have 5x minus y in common, so that'll be one factor. Taking out 5x minus y, we're left over with 5x minus 2y, and that's going to be our other factor. So our final answer is 5x minus y times 5x minus 2y. Last example for this note section. So factor in the following trinomial. So 6x squared minus 19x plus 15. So looking at this, there's nothing that all three terms have in common. So there's no GCF. So our A value is 6. Our B value is negative 19, and our C value is 15. We are looking for two numbers that will multiply together to give us A times C, so 6 times 15, which is 90, and the same two numbers to add together to give us negative 19, which is B. So I'm thinking negative 9 times po uh, negative 10 will give us positive 90. Negative 9 plus negative 10 will give us that negative 19 we're looking for. And we're going to use these two numbers in our blanks to split up this negative 19x. So we have 6x squared. Instead of negative 19x, we're going to use the numbers in our blanks. So negative 9x minus 10x plus 15. So we now have four terms we can now factor by grouping. So grouping the first two terms together, grouping the last two terms together. Looking at our first two terms, 6x squared minus 9x, 
They both have a 3x in common, so we can factor or divide out that 3x from both terms. And we are left over with 2x minus 3. Looking at our next two terms, negative 10x plus 15 GCF. Remember, I want positive 2x minus 3 to be left over. So I'm going to factor out a negative 5 for our GCF. In doing so, negative 10x divided by negative 5 will give us positive 2x. And then 15 divided by negative 5 will leave us with that negative 3 we're looking for. So 2x minus uh, 3, they have in common, so that'll be one factor. Taking that out, we're left over with 3x minus 5 as our other factor. So 2x minus 3 times 3x minus 1 is our final answer. So notice, these two things are exact same thing. This is in standard form. This is in factored form. So that is going to be module 5, homework 3 notes.